our mirror cognition group keeps on the move, and we are very pleased to see the ever-increasing interest you show week after week for our three websites, our selection, actually your selection, of some of your favorite subjects among the numerous ones we published this week, once again concern ground, air and naval forces from all over the world. As usual, they generate a lot of comments on the social networks we use. It's to say Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook and Blogger. Enjoy it. The result of the modernization of the Serbian BVP M88 infantry fighting vehicle was demonstrated at the Military Technical Institute on the 15th of May. After the testing of the improved running gear and armored hull of the vehicle, the Serbian armed forces made a request for a certain redesign, primarily in order to allow for more comfortable use. A hydraulic rear ramp has been fitted and the vehicle interior has been completely redesigned so that it's more comfortable for the crew and it increases the storage volume. The infantry is being rapidly equipped with a new generation of protective ballistic equipment and small arms, so all modifications should enable more efficient use of the new generation of weapons. When it comes to the configuration of the vehicle and its mobility in the field, the improved running gear increases stability on off-road terrain and comfort for the crew. The ballistic characteristics are significantly better compared to the basic version of the infantry fighting vehicle. The new ZTL-11 105mm wheeled armored assault gun is now in service with the Chinese army, according to pictures released on the Chinese Defense Ministry's website. The ZTL-11 is based on Type 08, 8x8 vehicles family, is the export variant of the ST-1. The ZTL-11 is already in service with the Chinese Marine Corps and was first shown to the public in September 2015 during a military parade in Beijing to commemorate the end of World War II in Asia. The vehicle was designed to provide a fire support vehicle with high mobility based on the Type 08. The ZTL-11 is armed with a 105mm gun and has a four-man crew. The design of the vehicle is very similar to the Italian-made Santoro. U.S. Army's Combat Capabilities Development Command Armament Center and Patria have signed a cooperative research and development agreement to determine the feasibility of incorporating a turreted, breech-loaded NEMO 120mm mortar in U.S. mortar carriers. The scope of the agreement is to assess the capabilities of Patria NEMO mortar system, its compatibility with U.S. mortar carrier platforms and fire control systems, as well as to evaluate the use of the current U.S. 120mm mortar ammunition in a breech-loaded mortar like Patria's NEMO. This agreement is a continuation of U.S. Army's effort to provide armored and striker brigade combat teams with rapid, precise and direct and direct fire capability where the operating crew is well protected and their physical burden is significantly reduced. In the field of air defense, as part of many years of contributing to the TLVS program, Thales Deutschland has submitted an offer for medium-range radar to the joint venture created for the purpose. The GM200MMC, currently being purchased by the Dutch Armed Forces, is currently in production. A prototype has already been successfully tested since 2016. The GM200MMC is justifically considered as a military off-the-shelf product. This radar is suitable for medium-range radar applications in two additional programs of the German Air Force. The compact system design enables loading on better protected vehicles such as Dingo 2 or a Boxer. It's specially predestined for the German Dutch Corporation ground-to-air defense. The Harry Truman Carrier Strike Group, underway in the Atlantic Ocean, conducted a week of naval and integration exercises with the U.S. Marine Corps elements assigned to the 2nd Marine Aircraft Wing. The purpose of the high-end training was to improve Navy and Marine Corps integration, communication, power projection in the form of strikes, and enhance readiness of air defense assets. The week of day and night time integration started with close air support exercises in which Marine ground forces coordinated with Navy strike fighter aircraft to hit a precision target. During the close air support even, ground forces used combat communication with Navy aircraft to strike the target. The integration of Marine Corps shore-based elements with deployed naval assets showcased the ability of both teams to fight together in a united naval expeditionary force. 
The coordination continued with high-end training during multiple air defense exercises and large force strikes over the course of the week. In one of the multiple events, over 20 CVW-1 aircraft, including Super Hornets, Growlers and Hawkeyes, faced off against a similar numbers of USMC Hornets and Harriers to conduct defensive and offensive counter-air and strike missions in support of the carrier strike groups. The Knaiz Vladimir Bore A class nuclear submarine of Project 955A ballistic missile submarine began underwater trials in the White Sea before the handover uh, to the Northern Fleet, the Russian Defense Ministry said on the 19th of May. Since the 12th of May, the submarine has operated in a surface state to check running and maneuvering capability. The underwater trials are assisted by two tugs of Belomorskaya naval base and the Mikhail Rudnitsky rescue vessel, it said. The trial team and the crew checked the elimination of previously exposed drawbacks and the operability of all systems and mechanisms. After the trials, a decision will be made to include the submarine into the northern fleet and deploy in the Kola Peninsula. The Knyaz Vladimir SSBN underwent missile and door water fire trials in late 2019 is the lead SSBN of upgraded Project 955A. It differs from Project 955 by hull lines, low noise and improved controls. The Borea A sea trials began in the late November, early December 2018 and finished in January 2019. In October 2019, Knyaz Vladimir submarine conducted for the first time an RSM-56 Bulava submarine launched ballistic missile SLBM. The Royal Australian Navy has welcomed its newest air warfare destroyer into the fleet with the first ever commissioning of an Australian warship at sea since World War II off the coast of New South Wales. The ceremony marked the moment the 147-metre-long air warfare destroyer HMS Sydney became one of Her Majesty's Australian ships. Sydney is the last of three Oberk-class vessels built for Navy at Osborne in South Australia and is based on the Navencia F-100 frigate design. She is equipped with the advanced combat systems, providing the ship with layered offensive and defensive capabilities to counter conventional and asymmetric threats. Sydney will now undergo her tests and evaluation period, where she will integrate into the fleet, and Navy personnel will develop their proficiencies with her cutting-edge aging combat system. Sydney and her sister ships, Obart and Brisbane, are based at Garden Island in Sydney. The Turkish Ministry of National Defence announced on Twitter that Turkey has conducted a successful test of its indigenously developed HGK-84 lab laser-guided bomb. The HGK-84 is a guidance kit that turns existing 2,000 pounds Mark 84 general-purpose bombs and penetrator bombs into air-to-ground smart bombs. It enables precision strike capability in all weather conditions. The kit also includes a laser guidance system and can be used against both fixed and mobile targets. Zala Aero has developed a new multipurpose UAV designated Zala 421-16 EV. The UAV was developed as a VTOL type, a hybrid of UAV aircraft and helicopter types. A unique advantage of this model is the ability of vertical takeoff and landing carried out in a fully automatic mode. It has a vast potential for monitoring and aerial photographic of inaccessible areas and aerial objects. The UAV relays HD video stream, enabling the station operator on the ground to view the video stream in detail. This innovation has already undergone successfully factory and field tests. This UAV can be operated in the air for two hours while having a cruising speed of up to 110 km per hour. But its key advantage is that it doesn't need launching from a catapult nor a prepared pad for takeoff and landing. On the 17th of May, the US Space Force and its mission partners successfully launched the USSF 7 mission on the X 37B orbital test vehicle. The sixth mission of the X 37B is the first to use a service model with additional payload capability to support a variety of experiments for multiple government partners. The mission will deploy Falcon Sat 8, a small satellite developed by the US Air Force Academy and sponsored by the Air Force Research Laboratory to conduct experiments on orbit.
Further, two NASA experiments will study the impact of radiation and other space effects on certain materials and seeds used to grow food. Another experiment by the Naval Research Laboratory will transform solar power into radio frequency microwave energy that could then be transmitted to the ground. In addition, the mission will test reusable space vehicle technologies. The USS F-7 launch is one of many achievements the Space and Missile Systems Center plans to accomplish this year. SMC's launch enterprise team intends to successfully and responsibly launch seven additional national security space missions through 2020. The same week, defense leaders presented the flag of the Space Force to President Trump in the Oval Office. The flag of the newly created armed service will hang alongside those of the other military services at the White House. The official unveiling comes almost two years after Trump directed the Department of Defense and the Pentagon to establish a space force. They officially became the sixth branch of armed forces last December. Well, keep in mind that Defense Web TV has more than 1,400 videos on its YouTube channel. So please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell here and there to be informed of the latest defense and security news.